Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Fitness fans, this is Vitruvian Physique. Thanks for stopping by. This is the Netty Debate Part 2. If you guys haven't seen my earlier video, I'm going to leave a link in the description. That video was looking at the ability, based on some stats, based on some science, some scientific articles, for you to determine whether or not an individual is a natural athlete. Probably a natural athlete, that is. And in this video, we're going to apply those principles. We're going to take the FFMI, which is the Fat-Free Muscle Index. It's a calculation you can use. And we're going to use that to see whether or not some popular figures in the, you know, the YouTube, Instagram, IFBB, bodybuilding, fitness model, whatever world are indeed natural athletes. Or could they potentially be fake natties, as you guys want to call them? You guys should think of the FFMI kind of like an RPG. And you can kind of level up based on how long you've been working out and how good your genetics are, you know, all of these factors combine at the same time. So uh, 19 is the average male, 20, 19 to 22 is someone who, congratulations, you look like you lift, you go to the gym, you know, you work out. Uh, 22 to 23, you are a great natural bodybuilder, you look fucking good. Or at the same time, you could be a shitty unnatural bodybuilder. Believe it or not, there are guys who will look completely natural yet they're on stuff, so they kind of suck. 24 to 26, this is the interesting point. I consider this the crossover realm. This is where you have athletes who are both natural, but they have the best of the best genetics, training, uh, exercise, programs, everything. These guys have the 99.999th best genetics on the planet in terms of a percentile. And uh, you're gonna have guys who are unnatural and still look good, that's how good an FFMI of 24 to 26 is. And then 26 and over, that's it, you are unnatural. I don't care what your genetics are, at that point, I do not believe it, I don't buy it, uh, you are on something. And if you claim natural at an FFMI over 26, who are you bullshitting? Couple of rules before we get started. Number one, this is all a combination of my personal opinion and statistics. We can never 100% beyond a reasonable doubt prove or determine that someone is an unnatural athlete, we can only determine how much of a statistical anomaly he or she would have to be for them to be a natural athlete. Someone you know, with an FFMI of 22 isn't that much of a statistical anomaly at all, whereas someone with an FFMI of like 25.3 for them to be natural is crazy. I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's astronomically high statistical anomaly, but it's still possible. You can disprove it beyond a reasonable doubt, just like you guys can't disprove that I don't have a unicorn that craps quest bars. Number two, no women. Uh, all the stats I've seen, all the research I've done has been towards men, and I, I don't wanna talk about a topic where I'm not 100% comfortable with my level of knowledge. Number three, all the reference stats we're gonna be using are gonna be from their most recent competitions or showings, and uh, we're gonna be using conservative estimates. So we're, if we're gonna be using weights, we're gonna be using the, the lighter weight, and if we're gonna be using body fat percentage estimates, we're gonna be using the higher body fat percentage estimates. The reason we do this is because, in a sense, we are making the, the athlete more plausible and easier for them to be considered natural. This way we are conservative, because if an athlete, you know, I mean, we give him the highest body fat and the lowest weight, and he's still getting an FMI of like 28, bullshit, guys on something, end of story. Uh, rule number four, the most important rule, guys, I know it's hard to accept, especially if you are fans of some of these guys. People lie, numbers don't. What I mean by that is money makes people do crazy shit sometimes. And uh, some of these guys, for them, this is their living. It allows them to live a life of travel. It allows them to you know, do amazing things. It give them, gives them freedom, meet people all over the world. And it allows them to do the most important thing, which is, is escape that nine to five corporate world that the rest of us, most of us live in. So because of that, lots of guys will do whatever it takes and in some cases compromise on their morals and lie to a bunch of people on the internet they've never met. So I'm not calling out anyone, but I want you to understand that as a fan, sometimes you have to take it with a grain of salt and it is difficult to accept. These guys aren't always 100% honest with you, especially when money comes into play. So without further ado, let's get into some examples. First on the docket, Christian Guzman, six feet, 163 pounds, 6% 6 body fat, 21.3 FFMI, definitely a natural athlete. In fact, uh, it's actually a bit low, but then again, he is a more of an ectomorph with a smaller body structure. Also, he's got very normal bulking and cutting cycles. The guy stays, you know, in an anabolic growth state for 
12 months or more, which is definitely uh, very reasonable for a natural athlete. Next up, Arnold Schwarzenegger, 6'2", 235 pounds, 7% body fat, 28.7 FFMI, the Austrian oak. I just wanted to throw this one in there so you guys have an understanding of how high the FFMI could go uh, when we were dealing with an obviously unnatural bodybuilder. Now this leads me into my third point, Simeon Panda, 6'1", 220, 5% body fat, placing high in the Muscle Mania uh, World Championships. Uh, single digit body fat percentage year round, that's automatically something that I want to look out for. And an FFMI comparable to that of Arnold. Is he natural? Who the fuck are you kidding? Next up, Matt Ogus, 5'7", 180 pounds, 9% body fat recently in these photos. Now, I know he may, he may look a little bit, you know, a little more shredded than that, but his body fat's weird. It's like shredded in the front, not so much in the back, so I kind of averaged it out. FFMI of 24.9. This is difficult because he is right there in that crossover realm. But because I know him from a qualitative standpoint, he takes long, consistent uh, growth periods, bulking for two to three years at a time. And he has a very slow um, cutting cycles lasting 25 weeks and more. And he may have some of the best genetics in the world, but uh, I believe it is possible for him to be a natural athlete. Next up, Steve Cook, 6'1", 204 pounds, 6% body fat. FFMI of 25.9, fifth place at the IFBB Men's Physique Mr. Olympia 2014. Um, right off the bat, IFBB kind of makes it difficult for you to be a natural athlete. So I do not believe that is the case with him. But then again, the guy doesn't really you know boast that he's a natural athlete anywhere. I haven't seen him like screaming at the top of his lungs, so it doesn't really matter. And uh, he looks great and he lives a healthy lifestyle. So whether he's natural or not doesn't really matter. But for the purposes of this conversation, I don't think that is the case. Uh, next up, Hosh Twins, 6'2", 6'3", around there, 203 pounds, 10% body fat. These guys, you know, they get lean, but they, they never get shredded. They never get down to that crazy 5 6% body fat, giving them an FFMI of 24. Uh, they have definitely some good genetics, even they've admitted to this. And a 24 means that you have, you know, like I said, gifted genetics, but it doesn't make you necessarily automatically an unnatural athlete. I believe that they are indeed... Uh, natural bodybuilders. Next up on the docket is a popular one. And guys, I'm of course talking about Jeff Side. This guy is like a lightning rod when it comes to arguments and comments over the natural debate and speculation on his natural status. And it's not hard to see why. Obviously, he's got a fantastic physique with some of the best genetics I've ever seen. And he competes in the IFBB Men's Physique Mr. Olympia. But I think the hype in regards to his physique being so unnatural is a bit overblown. And I'm going to go into detail and explain why that is. Number one, Jeff in the past has seemed to fraud or inflate some of his stats with regards to his body, such as his body weight or his arm size, uh, claiming 18-inch arms, which you, as you can see in these photos is a bit hard to believe, especially especially when standing next to Christian Guzman, who has pretty much confirmed that his arms are around like 16, 16 and a half uh, at a reasonable body fat percentage, and they are both six feet. And as you can tell, they're roughly the same size. This makes things a bit complicated because even though his physique has improved in the last couple of years, it's not that much of a drastic change. Yet in earlier interviews, he was saying he, was, he weighed about 185 pounds. And now recently on his Instagram, he's claiming he's 205. Uh, so for the purposes of this video, we are going to go with a kind of happy medium uh, of a body fat percentage of around 6% and a weight of 190 pounds. Next up, you have to consider the fact that he's got amazing genetic body structure. We're talking tiny waist, uh, crazy wide shoulders. Uh, and in addition, he has perfect genetic muscle insertions like the square pecs, the eight pack. Uh, everything fits in very nicely. This kind of helps give you the illusion of being you know, a massive superior physique. But it's not necessarily that he's so much bigger uh, than someone with average genetics per se. It's just that the muscle and the bone structure is put together in a much more aesthetically pleasing way. Third thing you have to note is that these guys pick and choose the fuck out of the photos they actually upload to social media. Making sure that it's the perfect lighting, it's the perfect angles, and then the photos where they don't look as crazy or as massive, those ones don't get put up. Uh, ensuring that out of 100 photos they might take in a day, only one or two that meet the desired criteria are actually uploaded on social media. Another factor with Jeff is that this guy got lucky as hell when it comes to his genetics. Beginning at age 12 and 13 and into his high school years, he already had a better physique than most men will for the rest of their life, regardless of their training. And whether or not you think the guy's unnatural now, do you really think that was the case back when he was, you know, 15, 16 years old? I don't think so. So finally, assuming the 190 pounds I mentioned earlier and 6% body fat at a height of six feet, we get an FFMI of 
24.6, which as I mentioned is fantastic from a genetic standpoint, but not unreasonable, simply a genetic statistical anomaly, which is very evident when we compare them to someone like Steve Cook, uh, who we have labeled as unnatural. And obviously you can see that even though they have similar fantastic genetic uh, bone structures, he's got quite a bit of mass on him. Next up, Chris Jones, 5'7", 180 pounds, 7% body fat. The guy never gets too crazy lean. Um, he's got insane genetics compared to and called the natural Ronnie Coleman um, because he kind of plateaued in a sense in, over the last uh, year or two. Now, that's not to diss him. He's plateaued at a crazy, crazy physique, in my opinion. Uh, the whole point of a plateau implies that you have a genetic limitation. It is for that uh, reason and because, again, you know, he's one of the most well-known names in the fitness industry, meaning that he's got some of the best genetics in the world. I believe it is, once again, reasonably possible for him to be a natural athlete. Next up, just for fun, fuck it, Phil Heath, five foot nine. 240 pounds, 4% body fat, by far the most lean guy in this uh, list. An FFMI of 33.9, Mr. Olympia for the last four or five years, if I remember correctly. Uh, I just threw him in there for you guys to know what it's like to see a modern day Mr. Olympia. This guy blows everyone out of, the, out of the water. He makes Arnold look natural, for God's sakes. He's like five or six FFMI points above Arnold. All right, next up, we got Ulysses Jr., 5'10", 200 pounds, 5% body fat, a muscle mania world champion, single digit body fat percentage year round, FFMI of 28.7, right on the dot in comparison to Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, so that's going to tell you right away, there's no way in hell, you know, I believe personally that he would be a natural athlete. Finally, last but not least, the son of Zeus, Z's. Six foot one, 205 pounds, 7% body fat, uh, 25.6 FFMI, may he rest in peace. Guys, the reason I threw him in here is to display that not everyone who takes anabolic steroids ends up crazy like Arnold Schwarzenegger or Simeon Panda for that matter with an FFMI of 28 or 30 or something. Most of the guys out there will actually end up having aesthetic physiques somewhere in that 24 to 26 crossover realm. So I say this as a warning for you guys not to be fooled because at that point it's pretty much indistinguishable between someone with an amazing genetic structure or someone who's just blatantly on some low level of anabolic steroids or clenbuterol or something all right guys let's quickly review and we're gonna throw in a couple of bonuses which i didn't get to mention in the video uh starting off christian guzman obviously natural arnold schwarzenegger obviously not simeon panda fuck no matt august it's quite possible steve cook i highly doubt it harsh twins once again good genetics it is possible jeff side great genetics and hard to believe but i'm not completely counting it out our first bonus dickerson ross i highly doubt it because he's way too lean in the off season and he got that way pretty quickly chris jones really high ff from my really high statistical anomaly, so I'm going to consider it possible. Keyword being possible. The late Greg Plitt, later in his career, I believe it was possible for him to be natural. Phil Heath, obviously not. Frank Zane, that's another bonus. He obviously was not being a Mr. Olympia, and in fact, his nickname was quote-unquote The Chemist. I threw him in here because I want to show you guys that he is right there in that crossover realm, despite being a Mr. Olympia. Ulysses Jr., statistically nearly impossible, and Z's obviously was not. All right, guys, that's it. Those are the stats. Those are all the qualitative aspects. Those are my personal opinions. If you guys disagree with me, that's fine. In fact, I want to hear about it. Leave a comment below. Uh, I want to hear what you guys have to say if I, you know, if you dis disagree with me on any of these specific examples. But a couple of final thoughts I wanted to mention. Number one, guys, don't get butt hurt. I know it may be difficult because you might be like, oh, I thought this guy was natural and you're saying he's not. I looked up to him and now what the, you know, what am I going to do? And he's such an asshole for lying to me. That's not always the case. Sometimes these guys have no choice. Um, the supplement industry, you know, the, the sponsorships, um, the organizations, the I, you know, the IFBB, NPC, these, you know, these contests, they don't let these guys come out. They don't let them be honest because lots of times the fans, the sales, the, you know, the, the, the pandemonium circulating around them is largely resulting because they consider them to be a natural athlete. And without that, it would all go. Poof. So these guys, they can't come out, even though they may want to. Um, there's other factors at play which may limit their ability to do so. The only guy I know who was indeed completely honest about his drug use was Z's, and that was because he didn't have any organizations. He didn't compete. He wasn't a you know bodybuilder or a men's physique athlete. He didn't have any sponsorships. He didn't, you know sell protein powders or like you know you know do clothing or anything. He didn't have to lie to anyone because of that he was open. And you know what? People still loved him for it. And that's going to lead me into my second point because this should not matter. 
Guys, I implore you, if you're gonna follow someone, don't just do it because you know they have a good physique and you think they're natural and you wanna look like that. But besides that, the guy's a robot and he eats his chicken breast and he does his bench press and that's it. You guys should expect, you know, informational content, inspirational content, motivation, um, you know, just awesome shit from these guys that you follow in addition to their physique. You know, that should only be a small factor. For example, I watch Matt Ogus because he's informational. The guy makes consistent good videos. I watch Jeff Side because, you know, he's funny and he's got, you know, entertaining videos and he's, you know, he's got a good sense in music, I guess. I watch Chris Jones because he's consistent. He's one of the oldest YouTubers in this community. He provides good content, good information. And all three of those guys have FFMIs in the crossover realm. And realistically, one or all three of them, or none of them, could be unnatural athletes. But at the end of the day, for me, I don't give a shit. And I recommend you guys do the same. Expect a higher standard of you know value from the guys that you follow in addition to just their physique. All right, guys, that's it for me. I wanna thank you for watching this video. I appreciate every one of you that, you know, takes the time to look at my face, subscribes, comments, likes, thumbs up, fuck it, even thumbs down, because that's, you know, negative uh, critique, which I take into consideration when I make my later videos. And uh, I appreciate the time that you spend with me. And sorry, I look a little bit weird. I know I'm kind of orange and brown. Oh, but look at that lighting, though. I am actually three days out of my men's physique natural show. It's going to be for the OPAs at the CanFit Pro this Saturday in downtown Toronto. So keep an eye out for videos coming from the day of leading up to the event. Also check me out on Instagram at Vitruvian underscore physique. Uh, I'm going to be putting a lot of photos, content leading up to the show, what I'm eating, what I'm doing, what the show is like, you know, what are the competitors like at a natural regional uh, men's physique show. So definitely check it out and follow me if you guys are interested in that kind of stuff. But besides that, that's it for me. I will, once again, I want to thank you guys and uh, I will see you in the next video.